French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte was one of the world's greatest military strategists. He was a genius when it came to combat and expertly sized up the enemy. So you can imagine his plight when he lost a battle with a horde of combatants that stood no taller than his knees. When 38-year-old Napoleon signed the treaties of Tilsit in July of 1807, naturally he wanted to celebrate alongside the top brass of his military with a traditional hunt at his sprawling personal Parisian park. Perhaps a rabbit hunt would do the trick. His chief of staff, Alexander Berthier, set out to collect as many rabbits as he could find to make the occasion extra spectacular. After all, some of the most elite personnel would be in attendance, and Alexander wanted to truly honor his fearless leader. He gathered hundreds, if not thousands, of domesticated bunnies from local farmers. They were caged and ready to go. The event started just fine, and by the time the bunny hunt was set to begin, everyone was eager to start the chase. The dozens and dozens of bunnies were placed in the field in their cages and simultaneously released. Everyone readied their weapons, hopeful to hit the first target. But instead of the rabbits running away for cover, they came straight for Napoleon. As it turns out, what Alexander thought were wild animals were actually rabbits that were regularly hand-fed every day. And now they were hungry. Ravenous, you could say. The massive wave of fluffy bunnies crashed into the emperor and his men. In a scene that might usually appear humorous and darling, descended into chaos as the bunnies furiously attacked Napoleon's ranks head on. Expecting food and treats, they scraped and nibbled at buttons and embellishments they mistook for snacks. Despite his men's attempts to beat them off with sticks and riding crops, the rabbits clawed their way up to the decorated war hero and quickly overwhelmed him. With no tasty peace offerings at hand, they were completely defenseless. Napoleon managed to get away from the swarm before he could be wrestled to the ground, and the embarrassed commander waited in his carriage until the coast was calm and clear before returning to the battlefield. There were no casualties on the human side during the epic battle that day, that is, if you don't count a bruised ego.